Ooh, all the deals are starting to come now. 10 gold per turn they're willing to offer. That's not too bad, actually. And this archer is being surrounded. Oh, dear. Right, um, okay, I can kill that Embark unit. Oh, no, I can't quite kill that Embark unit. That's not too bad. Let's just go and give some reinforcements over here. Battle cry. Um, catapult attack. That's good. You coming down. You coming down. This swordsman can... Let's see, I kind of want to focus on their units a little bit here. There's a scout there, so I'm just going to settle my two cities. I've got two lovely Optum unit spots there, so I'm just going to get the two builders going. I should really get the Government Plaza going soon, actually. That would be a pretty good addition. Oh, yeah, they're smashing into my swordsmen, actually. But the thing is, they're giving me more um, strength of the Uberon's trait just by surrounding my units, so that works quite well for me. Oh, that catapult took a bit of damage. Ouch. Um, let's give you grape, Shh, no, crew weapons, that's good. All right, we need to make sure that my siege weaponry can make it to the front line. That's quite an important thing. How are we doing based on the Congo? I'm on 17 techs, they're on 18, so I am well in this at the moment. That is good. Let's get mathematics quickly. Let's get Victor. I've been waiting for you into my newly acquired territory, which actually gives it full loyalty which is pretty nice uh, we've got more arches on the way down here which is pretty good I can upgrade one to a crossbow I've got conscription feudal contract yeah that's fine for now do I want to treat myself to one crossbow yes is the probable answer to that um, this swordsman I think I'm gonna probably end up losing unless I retreat in a sort of clever way but I might have to just see what I can do if I can escape brilliant if not it is what it is yeah you know what I will have one crossbow let's do it yeah they've totally surrounded me yeah I've lost it 19 gold per turn on a peace deal though 19 gold per turn that's pretty good they've just built an encampment here that's gonna make this attack a little harder actually um, <laughs> I do have as I said I've got good units which is being a bit surrounded at the moment can I kill this warrior? Yes, I can. Okay, good. All right, come on, everybody. Heal up. Everybody needs to be on good fighting form. I've got a decent enough army building on this border here. I'm regathering myself on this front. Um, my archer probably won't end up escaping, but I so two catapults. A swordsman now being produced pretty much every two or three turns. I've got crossbows on the way to the front line as well. I mean, as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm producing in terms of output. This is, this is good. I've got a lot of production. I've got a lot of capability. So um, there's no need to go to peace just yet. But I just need to make sure that this war doesn't derail my campaign. Taking another two or three of these cities would be a huge boost for me. And actually, I think I need to be a bit more precise on this one. Let's go for military engineering. Uh, if I can build one aqueduct and one water mill, actually, that would boost the tech up pretty well. So actually, let's get the water mill going here because this city really needed one. And then we'll follow that up with an aqueduct because, again, we really needed one. All right, let's push in a little bit, see what we can produce. I think I mean, this crossbow is looking pretty good, but I'm just going to stand you on the hill. Get you to go there. Okay, I and mean, we're going to go into Dark Age soon unfortunately because it's just I'm not doing very well at getting the era score three turns I need to get seven era score <laughs> hmm it's not very likely so we'll have to see if, if the Congo also go into dark age then that's fine if they go into a golden age we're gonna have real problems keep on firing we've got some good units on the way but oh my goodness this is tough this is really 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 tough now Okay, military alliance, come on, you want one of these. There we go. That will do. And then we'll go for a religious alliance with you because you probably want one of those as well. They really don't. It's weird, that. Uh, okay, that's good. That's fine. Right, I need to get some luxuries into the empire. We need to be as happy as possible for when we go into a dark age because it's going to be pretty brutal. But we've got loads of luxuries we can trade, actually. So Japan has marble and gypsum. Let's start with those. Oh, yeah, easy trading. That's great. Then we've got dyes. What do you want for this? Do you want much? No, they really don't want much at all. And then jade. Okay. All right, that should give me a load more luxuries. Amenities, I should say. 
Okay, good, good, good. Everyone is content. Not happy. Well, that one's happy. Oh, if only I could get one more, that would be a huge benefit to me. But no, for now, that'll do. Here we go. The military alliance is kicking in now. I have a lot more strength. Like, a lot more strength. Okay, do that attack. You come back. This archer actually did manage to survive, which is the funniest thing ever. It's just been running the entire game. Look, I've actually built up a pretty decent army on that front now. This army's doing a lot better. Like, a lot better. Um, if I go for one to there, and then I'll move this swordsman round, you to there, you to there. Okay, that's good. Everyone's got a little bit more adjacency now. Everyone can fight in. We've pushed through a little bit now. I've got more reinforcements on the way. I'm building units faster than they're dying still. Just. <laughs> Just. So let's see how bad it is. Let's see how bad it is. Normal age for the Congo. Okay. Uh, we are probably going to be doing lots of districts. We'll get monumentality. Uh, my Oh dear, that's pretty bad. That's uh, The rest of my cities are fine. But I'm going to lose this city pretty quickly because there's nothing really I can do on this one. Governor place there, garrison unit, occupation, pressure. Pressure is for minus 20, that's the issue. Even if I were to get luxuries in here, I think I'd struggle to do much more than that. I mean, I could switch governments to give everybody plus one immunity. That would help to keep everyone happy. Um, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. I could take everything they've got if I go for peace and give back the city, which I can't keep. It's only one population and I'm in a dark age now. So we're just going to have to live with that for a bit. But this is fine. This gives me time now to switch around a little bit. We've got feudal contract we don't need anymore. Conscription is not needed because I've got loads of gold coming in. I can now think about just building my infrastructure up a little bit and making sure that we're getting settlers out, making sure that I'm producing everything that I need to. I think in the longer run, it's painful to make peace right now, but we're going to do it. And the Congo, I'm sorry, you're going to have to give me open borders because all my units are the wrong side of you. Um, there you go. That'll do. Right, that'll do. Yeah, rest of my loyalty is fine, but we need to make use of this piece, huge use of this piece, and we need to go and um, basically settle everywhere. Trade routes to me, and I like less grievances for me. Let's go for just a couple votes on all this stuff, see if anything gets through. No, unlikely to. Um, Japan, and okay, <laughs> I didn't win either of those. Fine. Well then, if it's going to be like that. Always feels like a lazy point in the game, but I've got one, two, three, four, five, six cities and they're all getting builders sorted. It's just that sort of stage of the game where I'm like, you know what, let's just build my infrastructure up, let's fix everything, everything's broken and or on fire, which isn't great for the longer term health of my nation. I've just built loads more units, but they are all, again, everything's on fire. So let's just get it all back, back and healed. Have I got any nighter? This is a really good question for me. Oh, if I can spell nighter though, that would be the other thing I should say. One, two, three. Oh, there's loads in the periphery. Oh, there's some down there as well. Okay, we've got, we've got options. That's essentially the long and short of this. There are options everywhere. Few. In the meantime, uh, feudalism, build an armory. Build an armory is something I should probably consider doing because I do need muskets. Muskets are going to be important for me here. If I can get muskets together, I can build some impressive units to go after the Congo with. And culture pump. Oh yeah, filling in these big old gaps in my empire. I've made about 10 builders already and I can already see a huge, huge difference in my empire. Choosing civic, divine right. I'm just going to switch out like limes are useless. But I'm going to go back to feudal contract because the thing is I do need to be continually making units because it gives me culture so it is a good sort of use of my time here I'm still getting rid of every forest in my empire I'm building every single mine I can because of course mines just give you the most amazing stuff I'm just waiting for Magnus to sort himself out in this city so I can go bum 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 and just clear all the forests in one go again don't think it's the best long-term solution for my empire it's getting rid of every single forest but it's an enjoyable pastime you know just decimate the world why don't you oh great engineer i don't actually have any cities at the moment that need more districts i'm just going to keep him 
and wait for him for a little while. That's not a bad idea. Now, I will need an armory, and I think, actually, having one in my capital isn't a bad idea. So we'll do that quickly. The interesting thing is I did manage to get the military strength for the Congo down to about 200 in that war. So it was quite effective. It was a brutal, bloody war, but a, but a war nonetheless. All right, Magnus is in place. That means I can go ka-chunk and ka-chunk and start doing some amazing things in this city. Should we get um, Seth? I think some settlers up would be a pretty good idea in this city now. In fact, actually, I say that, but the government plaza, this is the city I'm going to be producing settlers from. Um, so I'd like to get that one going if possible. Uh, let's just stick it over here. It needs to be out of the way. Clear the rainforest. Clear the forest. Okay, you guys are doing pretty good. We'll just get some of these quarries down, I think. In this new city, I'm just going to get the infrastructure quickly. I mean, the oppidum is what I need, but the bit get builder in quickly. This is good. Continue to chop everything down. Oh, I love this stage of the game. This is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant fun. Lots and lots of mines. This city, my second city, is now just amazing. I'm going to get provision in this city, and I'm just going to, as I say, spawn settlers through my nose box. Do you see how effective having all these builders around is? Like, my, my empire is just going kwa-boom and massively spreading now. As I said, we're gearing ourselves up for that second wave attack on the Congo. I think it's definitely worth doing. Oh, Barbarian, please go away. He's been stood here, just single-handedly attacking that city for God knows how long. It's like, it's not going to work. It's clearly not going to work. You're sat there like a prawn, just sort of doing nothing. Oh, painful. Okay, monarchy time. Gives us a little bit of extra stuff. We've got serfdom. We've got colonialization going. Feudal contract is good. Conscription is good. And should we go chivalry? Because we've got some horses coming in now, which is a good thing. So yeah, chivalry. Why not? Why not? What a good, good job we've got here. Uh, let's just get some food back into the capital. This is great. Pingala's pretty much giving me the like sole source of just stuff into my city at the moment which is quite nice we've got the workshop going i'm building an armory it will come along soon in the meantime i'm just producing more units um like a knight or two would be an amazing addition for me okay now magnus is up and running i've got pingala who's now got grants going which is good because i finally built the workshop in my capital which means i'm going to get huge points towards wonder construction now which is a lovely thing we've got stable followed by armory that'll be done in eight turns which would be plenty of time in order to get boost to gunpowder so this is not bad this is not bad hey we are we are beginning to march which is quite a nice thing i should also put in craftsman which i have been neglecting for far too long should we go over serfdom or over colonialization? I'm still, I think I'm still building quite a lot of builders everywhere, aren't I? Oh, actually no, I've switched out from builders now, so this is fine. Good, this works well. Okay, good. We've got chivalry, we've got feudal contract. Yep, 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 yep. This is lovely. This is all really, really good. Yeah, there we go. Eight great engineer points coming in per turn now, which is much better than it was. Um, that was a major defeat. For a second I thought I might have screwed that up, but no, it's okay for the moment. We've got a scout lurking in this sort of area. I've got a knight on the way and a swordsman on the way just to come and sort it all out, but still, 330, 330 military strength for the Congo. I'm starting now to gear back up to war. Um, it won't take long for me to get fully back into that sort of mind theorem, I don't think. We've got settlers popping up every three turns at the moment. I've got one that's going to go settle over here. Um, I'll produce a builder with it and I'll be able to sort of move around and, and nicely get one, two different sources of nitre. I've got a settler that will be moving down here to get another three, four sources of nitre. That should give me enough to get myself the musketman stables on the way to being done. I've got an armory on the way after that to rush it. So yes, it looks like I'm falling behind a little bit in terms of tech, but I don't think I am. I think we're okay. Okay, let's just chop this down and then we can use that swordsman just randomly appearing to attack the scout, which is lovely. And then the oppidum. It's another plus six over here. All of these are, of course, lovely plus 12 ones because of the bonus cards I've been putting in. Lovely. There we go, there's the settler. So I'm gonna just use my builder now to just very kindly 
Uh, just go pop and then pop on that nighter. Yeah, that's quite cool. Oh, I do miss having the um, the card though for for extra builder charges. It makes such a difference. Okay, armory is going to be fixed in one turn, which gives my quarry improvements plus one, which is pretty cool. I would quite like this one, the mine improvement plus one. Um, I can never remember which which is the mine before that one. Industrialization, apprenticeship. Okay, so I've already got apprenticeship. That's fine. So that's good. Um, what do I do then? Let's go for mathematics. Is it worth doing that or printing? Let's go mathematics. Yeah, I need to make sure I don't lose out on all of these like silly little districts at the beginning of the game. Okay, right. We've got lots of settlers being made now. I've got resources, but they're being used pretty rapidly. Let's get a couple more builders in. I need to switch back now. This limes is useless, so let's just get some builders going again. I mean, look at these uppidums. Plus five, plus six, plus five, plus four over there. Plus six, plus six. Oh, oh, oh. oh imagine this with industrialization. It's going to be so good. Gunpowder is complete. Okay, uh, so it's 310 gold for an upgrade. It's the nitre. Nitre is the biggest issue for me, but we are now almost in a position where nitre shouldn't be that much of an issue because I'm building these little settlements here. Again, they're not the best. It's just for the nitre. These are nitre cities. Building mines to get some nitre. Doop, 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 doop. It's very handy, this, I must say. And one nitre mine. Ha, ha, ha. Two nitre mines. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. We've got the policy cards in place now. That means we can upgrade our swordsmen on the cheap. That is 155 gold for an upgrade there, or 100, yeah, 185, or 155, sorry, and 10 nitre apiece. We're getting four nitre per turn at the moment. As soon as this settler makes his slow and lazy way down to the front lines, we should be able to get more. You can also see I'm building a lot of workshops in preparation to spam the great engineer points a little bit on one side, but also because I'm starting to focus along the top of the tree now towards going to industrialization. Wonder construction. Okay, the question is, is my favorite still available? Yes, the mausoleum is still available. Oh, okay, that's intriguing. Um, in that case, where am I gonna put the mausoleum? I think I'll put the mausoleum like maybe here. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if there's a better space. I think, you know what, that's actually, not a bad location for it, so we'll go for a harbour. I hate the fact that we can't put the harbours next to the cities. It's so annoying. <laughs> All right, let's put it there. Um, and then you come round and then we'll build the mausoleum in a second. Try this again. I don't want any grievances. Thank you. And I would love more culture bombs because culture bombs, uh, you know, I don't have enough of them as it is. Right, we'll give that a try. And I've got all my favour back. Clearly not made a huge difference. Oh no, I do get culture bombs. Well, hey. Hey, that's a little bit of a difference, isn't it? Right, this city is about to go down. We're about to pick up the nitre. You can see, look, I've already got 16 in the stockpile. We're almost at the level where we're going to start thinking really seriously about upgrading all of these things, especially because I've got a ton of diplomatic favour. I reckon Japan. I reckon you might want to buy all this. But the question is, can you afford it? No. They're only going to be six gold per turn for it. I mean, that is atrocious. 20 gold per turn. That's a bit better. All right, we'll take that from you, Kemmer. Thank you. Welcome to the Ryan has changed his mind story. So I was gearing up to go to war with the Conger, and I kept thinking like, oh, it keeps creeping up. 50 defense strength, 55 defense strength, 62 defense strength. I'm thinking even Musketman's going to struggle against that. It's really, really tough. And then I was looking over here and I saw, well, there's Byzantium. And Byzantium have only got 42 strength in their capital and some of these cities have under 30. I mean, why, shall we give it a go? Should we go and take over Byzantium instead? And that might be a better, more fruitful object. I've still got space I can settle around the Congo, especially when I'm in a better loyalty position or not in a dark age. So, I mean, that's not too bad. This settler who was going to wander over into the desert somewhere for some some strategics actually i'm going to send over and move and settle on this coast i've got another settler like here Look, you see this this barbarian has been sat there for ages i'm going to go steal that i've got another settler who's going to settle down here to get this nighter another one this way which i'm going to go into this direction and settle up i think there's a city over here somewhere if i have a look at the loyalty 
Um, Prussia. No, I don't know of the city over there. But anyway, I've got a galley being made in the capital, a galley being made down here. That should boost shipbuilding. And then I should get that in like three turns, maybe. That'll let me move my army across and we're going to go after Byzantium. And for now, I'm going to actually declare friendship, if I can, with the Congo. And we're going to make them big democracy buddies. I think actually having these guys as friends rather than going to war with them until I get bombers, because these guys are a bit more entrenched, I think is worth it. Um, so, yeah, let's give it a go. I've also got the intelligence agency now being built in my second city, because that should hopefully mean that I can stick a spy over into Adrianople or Nikia over there. That will improve my ability to go to war. Um, and then maybe printing will be a good thing to do to get some more diplomatic visibility. Byzantium haven't got a religion, which I think just sums it up for me that these guys are actually fantastic targets. So, you know what? We're going to just commit. We're just going to send our army across. We're going to move it from one side of the map to the other. We're going to leave our border with the Congos totally open. Um, and here we go. They've only got 360 army as well, which is quite a lot. But, I mean, it's not the biggest amount. No, I've got a boat now. I've got a nice galley. Can't go and steal that settler with a galley. It's only a Norway thing, isn't it? But still, here is the settler. That is a new river city. We've got some more nitre now coming in. And bonk, even more territory. That is a pretty nasty looking barb camp. Let's keep an eye on that one. A lot of envoys here. A lot of envoys. I could try and steal Venice, although, I mean, the suzerain hold here is pretty strong. 940 gold. Ugh. We're not playing Hungary anymore, not unfortunately. God, I enjoyed that Hungary game. That was so much fun. Here we go, the army. We're embarking it all. This is going to be one of the largest naval invasions Gaul has ever seen. It's going to be good. There's the spy. Right, uh, I needed you to go right over somewhere that we're not going to kill very quickly, like this city. There we go. Uh, here we go. The mausoleum. This is what I wanted. Let's just stick you down and 215 production. Five turns to that. Now, do I save the rest of the great engineer? It's almost worth it. Because if I do, I get another charge towards it. Yeah, I think it is worth just holding fire. The only problem about having an army this large is it takes about 7 million turns to move it all about. But we're just about slowly getting there now. Oh, it's a big exercise, this one. Pretty sure the barbarians of this area are actually the the most brutal defenders of the entire bit. Like, there are so many barbarians here and they are so strong. Oh my god. Terrific. Still getting a score from barbarian encampments though, which is good. That means we're going to have at least a normal age. I don't think we're going to get 11 points in two turns. So a normal age will have to do. But a normal age is fine. It sets us up. It means we haven't got huge loyalty problems. Uh, Byzantium are in a gold heroic age at the moment, in theory. So... I mean, at the end of the day, it could be worse. Come on, right, these barbs are really annoying. I need to actually get a, a thing. Um, oh, oh, do I want to lie to somebody? No, I will declare war on them. Here we go. I want to keep my diplomatic prowess as, as high as I can get it. Let's take that settler quickly and we'll start to move in. And they've got crossbows at the very least, which means they've got a little bit of a defense. That's not too bad, though. You know what? I've got nowhere else to put my envoys. I am just going to steal Venice because it gives me era score. And they've actually got a pretty amazing army that would have come and uh, wrecked my new lovely city over here. So, you know, 220 production for a night. God, so that would give me 44 culture building that. That's, a, that's pretty good. I'll take that. I actually have a scout, ridiculously, that's uh, just in their land. And I might see if I can go and steal some science. We'll see what the ranged attack is. I think they've got crossbows, haven't they? So it's going to be a pretty nasty one, but we'll see if it survives. No, is the short answer. Um, okay, crossbow did 50 damage to my to my units. Oh, God, there's so many barbarians here. Oh, and a meteor shower. Oh, hello. Oh, that's right by my lands. Oh, I mean, that sounds amazing. Uh, how do we get that in the night? Go on, go and have a look. So they are in a dark age. Oh, this makes it a little easier for me. Okay, so let's go for... Monumentality. We're still converting a lot of stuff. Or building a lot of stuff, I should say. Um, 
the, 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 these crossbows, I mean, ugh, these barbs are just so annoying. So many of the damn things. But I should be able to embark my unit now. Okay, so it's at least one unit now embarked, which is a good thing. Um, we're still bringing our units forward. We have so many units to bring that hopefully one of them will make a difference. All right, yeah, I'm going to settle here. It just gives my units a little bit of space to uh, just breathe, be themselves. Here we go, listening post. Nice, I need to get printing involved now because I need as much attack bonus against Byzantium as I can get because they are tough and they're giving me just a small amount of grief actually in terms of trying to attack them and just get a hold of them generally. And I've got, as I say, unit numbers, not a problem. I have, I have about 107 million units, that's not a thing. They're just all being shot to death at the moment which is not ideal. Mausoleum of Harikikarnassus. That's definitely how you pronounce it and it's a great wonder to have. Okay, we're just going to keep an eye out for other decent wonders. I mean, I could in theory get Petra in one of these cities. I oh, like this city here would be an amazing Petra city. Oh, it's tempting. And when I say tempting, I mean I'm going to do it because why not? Okay, we're slowly starting to encroach now. To be fair, the good thing about this war is I'm losing a lot of the, the stuff that was taking quite a bit of um, gobbitern from me. So this is not the worst thing in the world. There's printing. I'm starting to boost now, which is pretty good. I'm even starting to build a couple of campuses where I've got nice plus three zones. I don't have too many plus three zones, but I've got enough. Oh, whoa. The city... Okay, we're ignoring the plus three there. The city just did 99 damage to my catapult. Or like that and the crossbow did. That's not fun. Ugh. I mean, honestly. Right, do I just take a shot in, in anger? I don't think it's worth it. I'm surrounding it with melee troops at this point. I can start to do some damage to the city of it. It's going to take quite a lot of the health of my troops away. God, this is, um, this is brutal. This is absolutely brutal. Right, if we focus on killing the troops as best we can first. That should help quite a lot with just clearing these areas. We've got muskets now that are trying to come in. That's the second city I've settled right next to them, which will help. Let's just go and clear that. That means we can just sort of move our units about. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, muskets are coming in. The muskets, I'm building loads of muskets. For every troop I'm losing, I'm building another musket. So my army is weirdly being upgraded. It's just doing it quite slowly. You know what, I'm just going to have to charge in and try and do it. Okay. Oh, got more knights now. That's good. Right to the front line with you. Switching over to raid, my favourite policy. Feudal contract again is needed because we're still producing loads and loads and loads of muskets. I say, these are by far the strongest units we've got. Byzantium actually has some um, renaissance walls, which is a little bit annoying. Um, struggling with those a little bit because I've got nothing that can breach them but as I say just producing loads of muskets because it's a really strong base troop for me to use. Right Petra boom that's half of it next time we'll get the other half and here comes the gold. Okay we've got some good units in now I'm pillaging all the districts in order to lower the strength of all of the um, well, the, the city center around it. We're getting there slowly I think Antioch will be the first one to fall. Um, I am sort of throwing my units at the cities a little bit here because I just want to at least break through the first wave. We'll see if this actually works for me. I don't know, it's a bit of a Russian technique. Just throw your units at them. And Petra! Okay, this should be an amazing city now. Yeah, look at all these yields. Ho oh ho! Amazing. I think I'll just swap that one in. That's an amazing tile. Good. Right. Okay, this is going to be our, our superior desert city. Okay, we've got printing. We're going to build universities pretty soon. Just trying to think of the best thing we can do. I think bombards are going to be essential here because we don't have the stopping power to get through the walls. So let's now pillage this. There you go, that three turns off that. That's pretty good. Oh, I'm losing so many units. Oh, I'm at war with the Congo because... Who just declared war? I think someone just declared war on the Congo, or the Congo just declared war on Mali. I can't remember which way around it was. Gossip. Congo. Uh, but Congo has just declared war on Mali. Oh, Congo. 
Oh, fine. Right, we've actually got to keep an eye on these borders. We've got pretty strong walls and we've got a lot of different districts to defend ourselves with, but we can't let the Congo just sort of creep in. So we've got to keep an eye on that front. In the meantime, I'm going to completely ignore the front. Musket through. Lovely. I could guess... Should I get another musket kill? Yeah, I just want to take out all their units if I can. Uh, you are still pillaging because you are the amazing campus one. That is bombards. Bombards are brilliant. I need to keep an eye on them. See if I can pick up a few. There's no point bringing the archer in because you will die immediately. Um, right, do I start attacking this city with the... Yeah, you know what, I will. Let's keep doing it. Yeah, they just built a musket, which means their cities are now quite strong. Oh, that's annoying. Just as I was just about getting all my units in place to to attack this properly. All right, well, we need to just think about what we're doing a little bit, draw them out a little bit, play this safe, keep healing our units. We just no need to rush, there's no need to do anything silly. We just need to gather ourselves again, go again. And finally, a very special shout out to Scott Stratton and Major King Kong for all of your help on Patreon, as well as everybody else who likes, subscribes, comments on videos, joins Discord. You guys keep me going. Thank you very much.